Hey guys, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com and um, we just kind of got a new setup so I wanted to just point that out so we can get started and move past it because we want to get to the cool stuff. So now, today I want to give you guys your first lecture on object-oriented programming. So, if you guys are taking this course I suggest, I highly suggest you guys take it on my website, cleverprogrammer.com, because you guys will have a full learning management system there, which means that it will tell you what percent of your course is complete and where you left off the last time. So if you forget and you're picking it back up, it'll start you from right there. Think of it like Netflix, but for your career. So binge friendly and no regrets. That's the perspective I want you to take on it, all right? So we here, we will also have a lot of exercises, perhaps some extra notes, and a wonderful community. So take advantage of that. And if you're taking it on my YouTube channel, that's great. But here, it actually might be greater, okay? That is one of the most famous and amazing ways to program. And it's different than functional programming, which is kind of what you guys have been doing. You know, you make a function that does something and that works and that's great. But I want to also show you object-oriented programming and that how maybe that can be useful for you. Okay, it takes a little bit to wrap your mind around it, but I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek at it, a little example. And um, then what I'm going to do is show you guys where you guys can start accessing this code from here on out. Okay, I'm going to make you guys some adults and I'm going to show you the real place to access this code from. So up until now, I've been giving you a link like repl.it, which is repl.it or perhaps some other form of uh, link. But now I'm going to show you guys GitHub. I'm going to introduce you to your new and most powerful uh, technology and I'm gonna show you how you can go and just take a look at this code and it'll start all being in one place, okay? It's gonna be like one home for all the code. So let's take one thing at a time and just start off with object-oriented programming. So how does it work? Well, a quick example I can give you is in Python, you need to create something called a class, okay? So we are going to create a class and that class could be called student okay now let's come down and the first thing whenever you make that class is you need to define your initialization method so how do we do that it's a little finicky if this is your first time seeing it but don't worry about it now give me something right like what does a student um, start with so like let's say that all the students in the world no matter what course they're taking no matter what class they're in what are some things that are common among students you can't say they're all taking a computer science course that wouldn't make sense because somebody might be taking a biology course or whatnot but there are a few things all students have in common hmm maybe they have a name right so if they have a name we're gonna put that in our initialization or init method um, in in classes in object-oriented programming what looks like functions are really methods okay so this method called init will have something called it was some uh, a name okay this self part here that's we just put that always uh, don't worry about kind of how it works it'll be very clear to you in the future okay but for now just remember when you open up that method write self so all students have a name right um, what is something else that all students might have in like let's say a college class or a university class perhaps they have a grade right so let's put grade here and for that let's just leave it at that keep it real simple now what we can do is we're gonna say self dot name is equal to name and self dot grade is equal to grade these things are going to be really funny looking right now because it's all new but I promise it'll start making sense okay so how do we deal with this data now I'm gonna create a new student okay we we can call the student kitty um, and I will say that um, this student uh, it's gonna be from a student class okay 
And for the self part, we're not gonna put anything there, all right? We are going to put her name because remember, this class is, takes two methods, right? Student class takes, um, this. Uh, the initialization method takes two arguments, name and grade. So we gotta give a name and a grade. So maybe we can give her the name Kitty and um, we can give her the grade, uh, I don't know, she sounds like a B student. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're just gonna give her a B grade. Uh, maybe she, she could be a really good student. Uh, and now we'll have another student named Daniel and we're gonna initialize him using the student class as well. And we're gonna give him the name Daniel and we're gonna give him the grade of, uh, I don't know, uh, 80, okay? Now, we've created these guys, but how do we access their data? So now you'll see that there's an easy way to access this data where it's all concise and nicely packed and packaged together. That's really the point of object-oriented programming. So instead of having like a variable like um, kitty and kitty name and kitty grade, we have all that information packed inside of kitty. And instead of having all separate variables for Daniel, we have all that information packed inside of Daniel. And let me give you an example. So let's say I wanna get Kitty's name. I can just do kitty.name, thanks to this self.name part. This self part is the Kitty part, okay? Uh, if I wanna get Daniel's name, I can do daniel.name. And now let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna say print. I'm gonna wrap these in print. I'm gonna go around here, and I'm going to simply run this. And at the bottom, hopefully you see Kitty and you see Daniel being printed. Now, what if I wanted to get their grades? Well, I can just do print kitty.grade and hopefully you guessed it by this point, Kitty um, Daniel.grade, okay? Hopefully that made sense. So hopefully you see a little bit of how it's working. And as I add more attributes, um, I am I can add like self dot age is equal to age and here I can pass that in as a possible parameter age and so what this means is that you have to actually pass an age otherwise um, you can not actually initialize those um, those guys like kitty and Daniel you can not initialize those objects so I, that's why it's giving me a little error, so I gotta pass in an age, let's say um, some age, okay, let's say um, 30 years old, and we can say for Daniel, 15 years old, and I can even print out their ages the same way, kitty.age, print daniel.age, and when I run it, you can see that uh, 85 and 80, which are the grades, right? And then 30 is the kitty age, and then 15 is the Daniel age, okay? So that is just a little sneak peek of how object-oriented programming works. I'll later show you how you can use it to actually do some really powerful stuff, like, uh, you know, the turtle module I was showing you earlier, we we're going to build a GUI where we can play around with the turtle module that we were using earlier, okay? So I'll show you guys some powerful things, but for now, I wanna show you where you guys can access this code. So I'm going to do some magic here, and uh, this is going to basically put the code for you guys online, right from my computer, okay? So don't worry about this part so much. I will have a course where I explain to you guys how you guys can do this too. So I'm going to say pushing new contents, of course, clever programmer students, and I'm gonna say git push, and then I'm going to go on github.com, and here's where you guys can actually access this. You can go on github.com, look for a repository called clever programmer underscore stuff, and in there, I have put together an object-oriented programming folder, which is OOP, and then the lesson one that we were actually working on, you can click there, and you can actually look at all of that code, okay? How cool is that? So it's going to be now the home of all of our code at Clever Programmer, okay? You guys will be able to go and access it from right there. I want you to do me a favor once you come up here, hit that little nice um, star, okay? Because 
I barely ever get stars on my GitHub repositories, and by having this, I can make people think that I'm a cool programmer. Okay, but in fact, I'm I'm just hacking and tricking the system. So that's it, guys, for this first video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys are excited for more. I love you guys. I appreciate you, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.